From 1989 until 1992, I had the honor to serve in a place called the Berlin Brigade in Berlin, Germany. I was part of the Allied forces that were protecting the city as an occupying force. There were so many things that happened there that were quite evil. One of those things happened to be about the bloody shoes. About 1936 to around 1945, there was a place called Sachsenhausen. It was a concentration camp that was of evil proportions. There were so many things that happened there, but specifically, one of the things that happened was a track that was used for all the people that were held as prisoners to put on shoes to test them to see how long they would last and what problems they would have. Didn't matter what size the shoe was or if it fit you, you would wear it and you would wear those shoes until they wore out. Mr. Solskensky was in prison for two years at the camp in Orienburg near Berlin. Uh, he belonged to the Shoe Testers Commando, which prisoners were forced to walk each day along a specially created route covered with various materials like gravel and sand, rocks and asphalt. The German shoe industry paid for the test because it wanted to find out which materials and types of shoes held up the best. Many of the weakened inmates died just after a few weeks. When it came down to time, people could have walked hundreds of miles in those shoes. Most all of them died, unfortunately, from this horrific test on human people. I've been there to Sachsenhausen. I lived in Berlin. I walked that track. Today I've been thinking about that phrase that says, you know, until you can walk a mile in somebody else's shoes. It made me think about this place. Most of the people in the community had no idea what was going on over the walls. Most of them, of course, didn't even want to ask to find out. There was so much death. While I was there in Berlin, it wasn't that long after, they discovered an unmarked grave with over 10,000 bodies. We found, currently in our times here from 2020, that we found some things that seemed to be horrific. Yet there's other things in history that could quite prove how horrible things have been for a long time. And although 2020 was a horrible year, there's worse things that have happened. Now, my question in bringing up Sachsenhausen and the horrible things that happened, by the way, it was later on that the uh, family that owned one of the largest shoe companies there that actually tested the prisoners at Sachsenhausen looked for people that were still living and they, they took care of their lives. They gave them money, took care of health care, um, worked with them and helped share their profits to correct some of the wrongs of their ancestors, which was really great. It's one of those places where you, you consider about walking a mile in somebody else's shoes. I know this is long, but have you ever really walked a mile in somebody else's shoes? Like the people at Sachsenhausen who would walk until their feet bled. They would walk until they could no longer walk and die. Now, it's one of two things. Either you're, you're watching somebody do that, or you have to t pick up those shoes, put them on your feet and keep walking. It's quite a different feeling when you're really willing to walk in someone else's shoes. My question for you today is, do you know what that's like? Do you know what it feels like to have issues of depression and anger and frustration, mental health issues, people that aren't quite sure who they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to do, and the stress that's incorporated with all those things? Sometimes it's important to remember that we can walk a mile in someone else's shoes. It takes empathy, it takes sympathy, it takes being willing to do something that is bigger than you, and whether there's a reward for you or not, sincerity, authenticity, passion. Are you willing to walk a mile in my shoes?